Tiger Tom says another issue with Clemson football is, as you said, coaching, player development, especially at quarterback, hiring Riley Luke. This is solid remediation. Yeah, absolutely. I, and that's it's been one of the least talked about things in the offseason was the hire of, of Matt Luke, the hire of, of, of Chris Rump. And obviously, I mean, it was a big hire. The hiring of Garrett Riley, obviously, you know, was a big hire last offseason. But some of the shine was took off because of the struggles that Clemson had this year, even though I think Garrett Riley is the exact same coordinator he was. At, at TCU, it just, yeah. it, but I think the, and, you know, when you go back and watch how, you know, Clemson's season played out and, and what they had to do to win games, you were like, well, you know, they can't do everything that Riley wants to do right now. But I, I think this team um, this year is definitely in a better spot, but it's going to fall down to quarterback play, which is also Garrett Riley's responsibility. So it's a big year for him too. But I, I, to I totally agree, Tom. Coaching player development. I, I think I think Clemson is still feeling the ramifications of missing at quarterback, missing so much at wide receiver, and not really having guys with experience to address those needs and 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 develop them properly. So it's it's it was a compounding thing. Yeah. Michael uh, says, I hear it every day. Dabo doesn't do NIL. You correct these know-it-alls and explain they use it for retention and they go to portal, net, uh, portal next. And the truth is it was Dabo's poor hires on offense. Yep. So yeah, yeah. basically echoing what Tom just said. I mean, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, that, yeah. and it's not I that Dabo yeah. hired poor coaches that, that won't, you know, didn't have potential or to be successful is they just got the job and got the position when they weren't ready for it. And you know, when you're a program like Clemson and where you're recruiting these, these four or five star kids that are trusting you with their development, yes. um, you have to have guys that have done it at a high level before. Um, yes. And I'm not saying you can't have guys here or there with, without experience. Cause that's, you know, Clemson, you know, Dabo's judgment in the past has certainly helped Clemson. You know, nobody, nobody knew who Tony Elliott and Jess Scott were outside of Clemson, you know, Clemson fans and because they were players, nobody knew who those guys were. Right. Um, you, you know, so, and obviously they co-coordinated to two national championships. Like that's what, but you also had the, but you also had a good mix of ex experience, uh, that experienced coaches that had done it uh, at a high level. You had, you had Brent Venables, you had Marion hobby. Uh, you had, um, uh, oh man, oh man, Tennessee, well, but both, both Marion hobby and, uh, uh, man, Brooks. Brooks, what, what I, I always forget his first name. Dan uh, Brooks. Yeah, Dan Brooks, longtime defensive line coaches yep. that helped you know propel you um, to those national championships. I don't know why I would, I don't know why Dan just never hits my head. <laughs> um, you had you, you know you had Robbie Caldwell. You know we we complain about Clemson's offensive line development and it, well and, and just kind of the lack of NFL guys, but. Robbie Caldwell put together really good offensive lines that were in, yeah. you know, with, you know, very limited talent and allowed you to win, you know, two national. I mean, that 2018 offensive line is one of the best, arguably the best in school history. And there was a lot of Clemson fans out there that were ready for him to go. Yeah. You know, so. I mean, uh, I, I think it was time for him to go because he was just getting I, yeah. I think he agreed but, it was time. It was kind of time. You know, the, but, the higher the higher that, that happened just didn't work out. And, and yeah. Clemson had, you know, quite a few specifically along the offensive side that just didn't work out. Um, but again, you know, Dabo didn't bury his head in the sand and say, uh, you know, I'm right and everybody else is wrong. No, he made the correction. Um, he he admitted the mistake by making a change, right? Um, so you know, and that, and that goes into like, th this is why I wish there were, you know, we were actually hearing stories written about Clemson, right? There's a lot of interesting things to, you know, dive deep in, dive deep into Clemson, right? The addition of a Matt Luke, the addition of a Chris Rump, um, you know, some of the players coming back. Like, this is the kind of stuff that you want to hear preseason. You want to hear this stuff being talked about and roster breakdown and, and all of this stuff and new coaches and how they're going to mesh together and, you know, oh, how, how's Matt Luke going to mesh with, you know, Garrett Riley? Like, you want to hear stories about stuff like that, um, not the same recycled national stories. So, you know, it kind of all goes hand in hand and, and, and goes together. Um, and I'm just tired of hearing 
all the noise about the same thing over and over again. I feel you 100%. And, and, you know, I think a lot of fans are tired at this point. I'm, I'm ready for games to be played because it's like, man, whatever. So we just, can we just start games so we can stop hearing about the portal? Yeah. 